You ever wonder what it'd be like to take one of the most successful divers out there and throw a chronograph in it? No? Well, honestly, neither have I. But evidently, someone at Orient did. Because that's exactly what we got going on here with the Orient Mako Solar Chronograph, or as I like to call it, the Panda Fish, which is basically a Kamasu with a solar chronograph movement thrown in it. And while it may seem a little odd, the end result is actually pretty cool, and it winds up coming across as one of the best grab-and-go quartz watches I've seen in recent years. Now, before we get to all the nitty-gritty, I do want to thank Tuss Watches for helping get this review made. As they're an authorized Orient dealer in the UK, and they sold me this watch at a discount because they knew I was going to review it, as well as they've now given me a 10% discount code to give to all of you. So if you're looking for a new Orient, Tuss is a great place to start. That said, let's talk specs. Now, while this one is obviously based on the Kamasu, it's actually one millimeter larger at 42.8 with a lug to lug of 48. And I think that's gonna be the real trick here, because if your wrist is less than seven inches, this one probably should be a pass for you. Otherwise, everything else is just about the same. Total thickness is the same at around 13 millimeters, 200 meters of water resistance with a screw down crown, Sapphire crystal, 22 millimeter lug width. The only other major difference here is the movement, which is a solar chronograph, which will have the standard six months of battery life and fully charged. You've got the running seconds down at the nine, while the main hand is the chronograph seconds, as well as you have the minutes elapsed down at the six. And for whatever reason, you still got the almost useless 24 hour sub dial over at the three. Honestly, pretty standard stuff for a Japanese chronograph these days. Now, despite the slightly larger size, I think this is still going to be a good one for a variety of people. The Kamasu case is fairly streamlined, so there's no extra bulk here on the edges. Plus, female end links on the bracelet, and when you put both of those together, I think it will wear fairly true to that size. And personally, I found it to be fairly comfortable on my 7.25 inch wrist. Maybe a little bit bigger than some of the watches I've been wearing recently but not so big that I thought it was uncomfortable, and it's fairly balanced throughout the day. My only complaint is a standard one I have with Orient, as well as Seiko, and that'd be for a little bit more taper on the bracelet, which we'll talk more about later. Plus, I think it's important to point out that you never want a chronograph that's too small, so small that you can't actually read the subdials. Otherwise, what's the point? And with a dive-style chronograph, there's already a lot going on. So the designers have to find some way to balance all of that. Now, the case design here is very similar to that of the Kamasu. So it's more of a streamlined diver with these sharp, narrow lugs and small, narrow crown guards. It's also almost entirely brushed, giving it a great tool watch look, except for the very polished, narrow chamfers going down each side. All in all, standard diver stuff these days. And that includes the bezel. It's got an aluminum insert, 120 click, unidirectional, and the action itself is okay. Basically what you'd expect from Orient. Good click, but maybe a touch looser than what I've seen from microbrands. Although it is probably better than what I've seen from Moseko's. Then on the rear, you have a standard Orient closed case back, which thanks to the solar movement, you will most likely never open. And I'm pointing that out here because it's a great feature to have on a watch that's going into water. Now, let's talk about the crown and the pushers over at the right. Like any good diver, the crown here is screwed in, but the pushers aren't. Which I know will cause some of you concern. I've heard it before on other watches. As the number one rule when using a watch underwater is to leave it be, don't touch it. Except for maybe the bezel, but even then. But the thing is, I have to believe that Orient knows what they're doing here. So even though I wouldn't fool with it too much, I have to think it's okay. And speaking of the pushers, since this is a straight quartz movement, the pusher response is okay. It's definitely not as good as a mecha quartz movement, where you get that really nice springy response and the second hand flips up instantly. So don't expect that, but for what it is, it's okay. And the fact that there's no battery changes here, and I think that maybe this is more reliable than a mecha quartz, I think is a good trade-off. Now, from what I know, there are three different versions of this watch currently available. You got a black version, a Pepsi version, and a Panda. Which for me, the choice was clear. Panda all the way. I just love the look of them. 
they're clean, typically have the best contrast, and the crisp white dial goes with just about anything. And if you're wondering why I call this one the panda fish, well, the watch is based on the Kamasu, which means barracuda in Japanese. And barracuda is a fish, so panda fish, which I think sounded better than pandacuda. Maybe. Anyway, as you can see, it's a great looking watch. Maybe one of the best looking Orients I've seen in a while. And if you're a panda lover who's okay with the size, you'll be happy with this. But there are some interesting and maybe odd finer details I want to point out, such as the dial, which has a slight glossy sheen to it, with a very subtle sunburst pattern, making it a little more off-white with some slight touches of silver than some other pandas I've seen, namely my Hamilton. So it's not quite polar white, but it still has a very good panda look to it, along with the black subdials, which are slightly sunken. And this is most likely where the solar cells are sitting, just underneath that, to keep the watch going. One really interesting and potentially odd choice here was with the indices. They are raised, giving the watch some nice depth. And I like how they look next to the very fine chapter ring on the outer edge. But interestingly, they went with this light blue loom coloring, compared to the pure white that's on the hands. At first glance, it's a bit of an odd contrast, but keyword there is contrast, as after living with it for a while, I think it works out well functionally. As the light blue does help the indices stand out from the white dial, something the hands don't necessarily have a problem with, as they're mostly over the black subdials. And I think it also helps to differentiate them from each other. Which does bring up another point, and that's that the hands here are far too short. Actually, forget short, they're just stubby. Now, on a chronograph, you typically have smaller hands, as you don't want them to block out the subdials. And overall, here it is still easy to read. But I think you could easily go a little bit bigger, or maybe a little bit wider, and not have any issues with it. Then there's also that barely usable date window down at the 445-ish position. It's small, it's at an angle, and it's pretty sunken down thanks to the solar movement. Now, I know Japanese watch companies like to follow tradition, and for them, a watch really should have a date in it. But with this design, there really isn't much point in it. It's really hard to read, and it would have looked better off if they just left it off. And before we move on, let's talk about the whole dive hybrid-y chrono thingy here, as this is the second one of these I've actually seen. And I know some of you are automatically going to ask why you'd ever even need both. They you know, do the same thing. Sort of. I think it's actually more complimentary than repetitive, as it's a timer and a stopwatch, both of which most digital watches will also have. So they're similar, but they do have different uses. The other thing is that the design here is a lot more crowded and busy than a standard diver. And I think if that's really what you're looking for, I can't see many people looking at this and thinking, wow, that's a good alternative. It's the complete opposite of what you're going to be looking for. However, the flip side to all of this, and this is despite all my nitpicks above, is that if you're looking for a good chronograph, that's where I think this watch may shine, as it's a good looking, very interesting, tough and durable option, at least compared to most of the other chronographs out there. And I think it's actually slightly cleaner and better looking than most of the chronos out there. As most chronographs, my Hamilton being a good example, throw on a big, bulky, chaotic tachometer on the outer edge of the dial just for tradition's sake, even though most people never use it. Whereas here, that winds up getting replaced with a timer bezel, something a lot of people use, even if you don't dive. And I think it comes off being more cleaner, more organized, and gives you extra functionality compared to a straight chronograph. So it's sort of this odd niche design, but I think it's one a lot of people could potentially get use out of, especially if they're looking for an everyday, reliable, grab-and-go quartz watch, one you never have to worry about. Whether it's batteries or getting it wet, this one should have you covered. And in that way, the Panda Fish has a lot going for it. Now, as for Loom, Loom is pretty good. The last few Orients I've seen have actually been a tad bit disappointing when it came to Loom. Whereas this one stays strong. The dial itself with that bluish loom could be better. 
but the hands themselves actually beat out a Seiko and keep up with the Kamasu. So with this one, Orient seems to be back on track. And before we wrap things up, let's talk about the bracelet. For the most part, it's what you'd expect from an Orient at this price. It's a standard tool watch design with good solid links paired with a folded end link, as well as you have the pressed clasp here. So no real surprises. However, one thing that's just a little bit disappointing is that it doesn't seem to be compatible with the Kamasu, or more specifically, the aftermarket bracelets for the Kamasu, as I tried to get my one from Strap Code on here and it just wouldn't fit, which may not be surprising considering it is a larger watch. So not really a big deal, but since there are so many aftermarket bracelets, it would have been nice if it was compatible. However, since it's a Panda, it does look great on just about anything. In terms of value, well, with Orient, it's always a little bit tricky since prices seem to be all over the place online, a lot of which is due to the differences between gray market and authorized dealers. And I think right now Tuss has these for about 288 pounds, which is about 360 US. Although after discount, it's more like 320. Now, Tuss is an authorized dealer, and if you shop around, you can kind of use them as a baseline of what to expect. And I think right around that price point, this is a pretty good choice if you're looking for a solar chronograph. Citizen Eco Drives are going to be the obvious competition, and price wise, this is around many of those. But here, I think the case and the bracelet, as well as the dial, are a little bit more nicer than those $300 Citizens I've seen. Not to mention, Orient has a more scratch resistant sapphire here. So, Citizen has a lot of great chronographs, but I'd probably go with the Orient here. Bottom line, it's still a little bit bigger than some of you may have wanted, but it's still a great dive watch, chronograph, hybrid thing, giving you perhaps the best of both worlds. And I think if you're going to make something like this, a solar is the way to go, as you won't ever have to worry about battery changes, or at least not for 15 to 20 years. Just some fun in the sun, and the panda fish should be good to go. But as usual, let me know what you think down below, or if you can think of another solar chronograph that does it better, let me know that as well. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Shane, this is Ross of Time, and I'll see you next time.